Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to be talking about momentum, specifically conservation of momentum. So in the next video I'll cover impulse and momentum, but today, right now, I'm going to talk about conservation of momentum, which basically uses the equation P initial equals P final, or if you prefer, P total initial equals P total final. In other words, we need to add up all the objects together. So first we need to know what the equation for momentum even is. That's simple, P momentum equals mass times velocity. And it's also very important that you remember that the direction for velocity matters. And what that means is if it's moving to the right, it's positive. If it's moving to the left, it's negative. Super, super important for momentum. So now let's look at an example of when we would use conservation of momentum. Let's say I have two boxes heading towards each other. The first one has a mass of three kilograms. The second one has a mass of five kilograms. The left box is heading to the right with a speed of 10 meters per second. And the five kilogram box is heading to the left at four meters per second. And so then they're, you know, they're gonna collide. They'll make an impact with each other. And then after the collision, this box on the right, the five kilogram box, is now heading in the opposite direction at one meter per second. And what I would like to know is what is the speed of the left three kilogram box after the collision. So to do this, the first thing I need to identify is that this is the initial case and this is the final case. And so what I like to say is P initial equals P final. For the top case, the momentum of the three kilogram box is mass times velocity. So three times 10, three times 10. This is still P initial by the way, because now I need to add the momentum of the five kilogram box, which is gonna be five times four. And if you write five times four, like I am right now, you would be incorrect. For the exact reason I said earlier, the direction matters, it needs to be negative four because the velocity is moving to the left. So really we're subtracting here. It's gonna be 30 minus 20, so 10 is the initial momentum. In case you're curious about the units, it's the kilogram meter per second, probably the worst units in all of physics, which is why I'm trying to replace these units with um, my own unit called the Wiesner, which of course the symbol is a cursive W. And of course that has nothing at all to do with my name, Dan Wiesner, but that's what I'm trying to get at. I'm trying to get the Wiesner as the units for momentum, which is much nicer in my opinion. So anyways, 10 is the initial momentum. Now we're gonna set that equal to the final momentum, which the final momentum for the last case, it's gonna be three kilograms for the mass times velocities unknown. We're solving for it. So P final equals three V. And then I'm gonna say plus mass times velocity. That velocity is to the right now, so everything's positive. Three V plus five times one. And again, I'm saying this equals 10. So that means 3v plus 5 equals 10. Subtract 5 from both sides. Looks like 3v equals 5. And so my final velocity is whatever 5 divided by 3 is 1.6 repeating. And that is going to be meters per second. Now, what's interesting here is the fact that this is not a negative answer, which is fine. But what that means is both boxes are heading to the right, which is very interesting. So in other words, we thought initially that the box would be moving to the left, but the math turned out that both boxes are moving to the right now. And the reason why that makes sense is because the total momentum in the system was a positive 10. Therefore, the final has to be positive 10. Now, if I were to ask you a conceptual question, just think about this real quick. We just saw that both boxes went to the right. Is it possible for both boxes to go in either direction, one to the left, one to the right? The answer is yes, that's very possible. I would just have to give a different value of velocity for this guy, that's fine. And then the final conceptual question, is it possible for both boxes to move to the left? And the answer for that is no, because then the momentum would be negative for the final. And again, I need it to be positive 10, as we said earlier. So it has to be at least one box moving to the right, is what we discovered right here. So that's gonna do it for this problem. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. Let's say I fire an arrow at a block of wood. 
The arrow is going to have a mass of 500 grams and it's going to be flying through the air with a speed of 70 meters per second. It is going to collide with a block of wood that is stationary, it's not moving, and the mass of the wood, let's say, is 8 kilograms. Now what's going to happen for this one is the arrow is going to be lodged inside of the block of wood like this, and now both the wood and the arrow are going to be moving at some speed that I want to solve for. What would that speed be? Well, once again, I would say the initial case up here, the final case down here, and I have to set them equal to each other. So for the initial case, P initial, it's going to be the mass times velocity of the arrow, 500 times 70. Actually, that's not true. This 500 should really be 0.5 kilograms because we need to deal with kilograms for momentum. So 0.5 times 70, and then plus mass times velocity for the block, that's 8 times 0 because it's not moving, so that would actually just be 0. So it looks like we get a final answer of 35 kilograms meters per second. And again, that's for P initial. Now we're setting it equal to P final. So P final, that's going to be, let's see, the masses are now like combined. You know what I mean? Like we're going to actually add these masses together. It's 8 plus 0.5 kilograms because they're moving together now. So that's 8 plus 0.5, which is obviously 8.5, times their velocities, which is what I'm solving for, and I set that equal to P initial, which was 35. So in other words, 8.5 times velocity equals 35. Just divide both sides by 8.5, plug it in my calculator, and I'll get a final velocity of 4.12 meters per second. And that's the answer for that one. Now let's just look at one more. This one is not going to be a collision, it's actually going to be an explosion, and that's an important difference. Keep that in mind. Let's say I'm standing on an ice rink, and you know, everyone's got their figure skates on, and since we're on ice, there's no friction going on here. And the, these two friends here, what they're going to do is they're going to push off of each other. Okay, so right now, they're together, they're, you know, just holding hands, whatever, and then they're going to push off each other, so that now the one friend is heading, let's say, two meters per second to the left. And what I want to know is what is the speed of the friend going that way. And I'll, I'll tell you, yes, the friend is definitely going that way this time. I also need to give you masses. Let's just say they have the same mass. I'm not going to tell you what the mass is exactly. Okay, so here's what I would say. This is still the initial case. This is still the final case. So I would say P initial equals p final. For the initial case, they're actually not moving at all right now. They're they're at rest. They're not moving yet. So in other words, the initial is actually just zero, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Now for p final, I now have some math to do. It looks like they have the same mass. I didn't say what the mass is, which means you can do one of two things. One, you can literally make up your own mass, 10 kilograms, 100 kilograms, it won't matter. But I'm going to just use variable m because that's what your teachers and professors would probably recommend you do. Come up with a variable. So now the mass times velocity of the first kid is going to be the mass m times the velocity negative 2. Don't forget, it's moving to the left, so negative 2. And then plus the mass times velocity of the other person, mass m, velocity v. We are solving for v. And again, I'm sending this equal to 0 because p final equals p initial. So negative 2m plus mv equals 0. We're going to add 2m to both sides. So mass times velocity equals 2m. Mass cancels, and we get v equals 2 meters per second. And since it's positive, that's to the right. And those are some good conservation of momentum problems for you to try on your own. You can rewatch the video, pause it, see if you can come up with the answers on your own. And in the next video, I will be covering impulse and momentum. So thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day and bye-bye.